During the show, Michael Cole said, there's nothing Gunther can't do. Oh, really, Michael Cole? Well, let me put that to the test. You say there's nothing that Gunther, a tremendous athlete, can't do. A guy that can get the best match out of anybody. You say there's nothing that he can't do. So that means he can do things like defy gravity and float around because you said there's nothing that Gunther can't do. That would mean he's an immortal. That would mean he could remain forever young. He wants to remain forever young. Does Gunther really want to live forever? Forever, forever young. Forever young. Gunther wants to remain forever young. Does he really want to live forever? Forever, forever young. Well, let me tell you right now, if Gunther can't do any of those things, then that would mean there are limitations to what Gunther can do. That would mean that that whole thing about there's nothing Gunther can't do would make you a liar. You are a liar, Michael Cole, and you will go to hell for lying. Vintage Michael Cole. Nevertheless, I'm John Renton with my review WWE Smackdown from Green Bay, Wisconsin. The home of the former Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. And the home of the former Mr. Anderson. Anderson. That's me. Okay, enough talk. Let's just, well, okay, let's just do more talk because that's the whole point of a review. This show started good, ended good, and I think they really just decided with most of the women's segments, hey, let's just phone this shit in. Let's have them do stuff, but let's not really do great stuff with them outside of letting Liv just go nuts and letting Sonya <coughs> do a chair shot to Charlotte's head. Ooh, that was dangerous. That being said, pretty decent episode of SmackDown, even if some of the stuff is the same as it ever was. Same as it ever was. The SmackDown theme is ass. Oh, I hate rap. Oh, I hate rap. Oh, rap. Rap, rap is crap. Okay, totally screwed that up. Honestly, not all rap is crap. In all honesty, there's a lot of great rap. It's just not this rap in WWE. So, what wasn't crap was the Brown Strongman, the Brown Roll Strongman, taking on Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Braun versus Gunther. Gunther being outsized by a guy. Not outsmarted, because it's not hard to outsmart Mr. Strongman. Okay, I was nervous they were going to take the title off of Gunther. They did not do that, and I will say right now, this is the best Braun match that has happened in a few years. Seriously, this was really, really fucking good. I'm not going to say it was great, but as far as Gunther just straining every goddamn muscle and nerve in his body, he did a really good job here. <clears throat> Braun dominated first. There was a previously injured shoulder that Gunther focused on for quite a while. Uh, later, Imperium attacked, even though Gunther had sent him to the back. We got a, uh, via referee distraction. This went through two ad breaks. This went quite a while. <clears throat> we did get, you know, uh, the old Bob Backlund lift and everything. That was actually well done. We got a spine buster for two. We got a splash, but just for two. And then Gunther managed to focus on the arm, hit a powerbomb out of the corner. One, two, three. Well done. Good pace. Good stuff. Gunther may be one of the best wrestlers of 2023 as far as, like, ranked on uh, various people's lists because he's already making the Intercontinental Championship mean something. Please don't have him lose it until he breaks a Honky Tonk Man's record, which would take him through, what, SummerSlam, I think. It would take him close to Clash at the Castle. Honestly, do another UK pay-per-view. Don't do it at Money in the Bank. Don't do it at Money in the Bank, but have another UK pay-per-view or have some UK special <clears throat> where Sheamus wins it there. That would mean something, but Gunther has to break the Honky Tonk Man's record. Then we get recaps of Roman and Sammy, that, all that drama. Sammy and Heyman are talking. Heyman says, none of the bloodline are here. You're on your own, kid. I'll take care of the KO problem. That's what Sammy says. And here's Ray to talk about Dominic. I, I, this whole feud with Ray and Dominic, some people are enjoying it. I'm not. It's stupid. Dominic is not good. He's never going to be good in the ring. Again, some people are enjoying it, but it is what it is. He's going to get back on track by winning the Rumble. And speaking of going off track, here is here's Karrion Cross and Scarlet. No, I don't care about this feud. Cross tries to drum up interest by saying, You weren't a good father to Dominic. <laughs> and then Scarlet interferes, sort of. And then we get the weird red lights that don't make Cross any more interesting as he chokes Ray out. This is pointless. This is a stupid feud, and everybody should feel stupid for saying the cross was going to do better the second time around. So, Emma then asks Liv, hey, why did you want to be number one in the Rumble? What's wrong with you? Maxine Dupree was there for some reason. I hate the Maximum Male Models thing. Just want to say that. I don't know who told Raquel she could talk, but yeah, they really honestly should be canned, or at least fine. <laughs> and then Liv slaps Raquel. That was good. 
I don't know what Zaya did to her hair. I don't know why. And I also don't know why the crowd didn't care about Zaya Lee versus Tegan. Oh, I know why, because they haven't been given a reason to care about any of them. I like Zaya, and Tegan's a fine athlete, but I didn't care. Shining Wizard, one, two, three. That's pretty much a wrap on Zaya. If she's still with the company after Mania, I will be amazed. Now, I'm not saying she should be canned. I'm just amazed. <clears throat> I'll just be amazed she's still there. So, after SmackDown ended, uh, the Raiders attacked the Banger Bros, as they're called. Yes, that's really what Sheamus and Drew are calling themselves. And then we cut to the Raiders and Valhalla speaking. Rehiring Sarah Rowe was stupid. Why did they do that? And then we cut to Sheamus and Drew smacking each other, <coughs> banging each other's chest, bangering each other's chest, just slapping the meat off each other, slapping each other's meat. I'm going to say this until I make it as uncomfortable as possible. And... There's going to be a tournament next week to crown SmackDown Tag Team Champions. They're splitting the tag titles, unless that was a, miss, uh, a misspeak, and they're, and they're not actually going to do that. But there we go. Um, also, man, let me tell you right now, Pierce looked very uncomfortable being uh, in between a large Scottish man and a large Irish man on camera. I can relate. I will be taking no further questions on this. So Bray shows up to a pop. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to hear this anymore. He had a cool uh, you know, return. That's it. That's where it peaked. People are popping for it. People like it. If you like it, great. The rocking chair and all the cliches. And I am him. I am Uncle Howdy. We fucking knew that already. And you're going to see a rebirth of Bray Wyatt at the Rumble. Great. Cool. Okay. Cool. 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 That's all I got to fucking say about that. Kayla is in between Sammy and Owens. And Owens wants Sammy to see the light. Okay. <clears throat> Liv comes out to a pop, we go to break, and then we have Kayla with Imperium, and Gunther says he's going to win the Royal Rumble. Okay, there we go. Liv and Raquel. The only question I have is, A, why did Raquel win, and B, why did Liv think breaking a table out in the middle of a match that had no DQ was a good idea? Because if you put Raquel through it, you were going to lose, <clears throat> which, yes, Liv is crazy, she wants to prove herself. I don't exactly get the logic there, and, I mean, Liv got the most out of Raquel that she could, but lost to whatever that bomb is. There there you go. That's really about it. And then Sonya wants a rematch. Pierce says no. Sonya says she's going to get that rematch. So she attacks Charlotte, who could have been seen from space in that pink bodysuit. A chair shot to the head at one point. They kept brawling. A free, free brawling. <clears throat> Recaps of Cody versus Seth the Hell in a Cell in his recovery. Same thing we saw on Raw. Sammy versus Owens to solve the KO problem. Basically, this is all about, could Sammy do it on his own? They did a bunch of stuff that they usually do. I'm not knocking the work, but I've seen this match time and time again. Now, that being said, good little wrinkle storytelling with the whole thing of Owens trying to get Sammy to see the light that the bloodline's just using him. And then eventually the Usos and Solo do show up. Oh my God, they were actually here. Pretends to be shocked. And that's it. They attack him. <clears throat> Sammy looks conflicted, like a little bit of sympathy. It's like, you know, Darth Vader with Luke and the Emperor, I, I guess. You know, you couldn't really see sympathy or any feelings on Darth Vader's face because he had a mask on or a helmet. You did good, kid. And then Solo splashes Owens through the announcer's table, and there you go. So that's how it's going to go off. We're going to have an eventual conclusion to this. The storyline has been well done. I just, it, to me... We all know where it's going to go. I'm not going to be heartbroken about it, but you know what? It is what it is. I'll give them credit for sticking with it and doing everything they can to stretch it along. So anyway, that's SmackDown. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.